Hello everybody, and I want to welcome you all to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures. And for me, this is a pretty exciting day because I've just uh, surpassed 200 subscribers. And I want to send a big thank you to everybody out there who's either watched these videos and the people who continue to subscribe to them and the people who are subscribed and continue to stay subscribed and to continue supporting the channel. Because without any of you guys, as you all know, none of this stuff here would be possible. So moving on and moving forwards, what I'm doing here is I am going to be building another crankbait that is kind of in the same style as the uh, very first two lures that I made. Um, these are lures that I'm hoping to all use this spring and summer for muskie and maybe hopefully bass, and but especially muskie. And... Um, these are all good. This is a through wire design just like all the others I've made and I'm doing basically the same exact process where I've basically sketched out the the body of the lure on the wood and then traced it all out again on marker and just kind of laid everything out so I have an idea of what it's going to look like and how everything is going to lay. Whether it's the eyes, the gills, the through wire and the hook hangers and everything like that. And then what I'm doing after that is I am getting the um, shape of the diving lip, the angle and everything like that and the thickness before I move over to uh, cutting the lure on the bandsaw. Okay, so after we've got everything drawn out on the wood, what I'm going to do now is I'm taking it over to the bandsaw and obviously, have you seen in my four other videos, we're going to cut the wood to shape and just cut it outside of the black line so that that way it gives us some, some room to sand and get it nice and smooth. So I've, we cut the top and then we go around and then we cut the other side and after that we should be done with the cutting. And after that it's going to be smoothing out on the sanding wheel and the um, belt sander. So after the body is all cut out, we then go along and take all the marks that we made for the diving lip. We, we go very slow, taking our time. There's no hurry on this because we want to get it right. And we just cut the shape out on the bandsaw. So make sure you take your time. There's no need to hurry. And then following, we go on to the sanding wheel and the belt sander where we're going to sand the basic shape of the lure and get the basic shape and get it all nice and smooth so that that way we can get everything cut. We can get our chamfer lines and everything done. So another time, take your time doing this, no need to hurry. And after the sanding is all done, we're going to take our marks and we're going to start, we're going to take a pencil or a pen, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to, what, what you want to do is you want to take and make a line all the way down the center, all the way around the lure, all the way down around the body of the lure, down the center. That's going to mark your center line so that way you know exactly where to drill for your uh, your hook hanger for your through wire and then you can cut along the top or if you want to do go along from the bottom you can go along from the bottom but you're going to make a cut either way and you need a center line to do that after that's all done what i'm going to what what i'm doing next is i am taking making just kind of measuring from one side from both from the middle out to the edge and kind of i want to draw a line all the way down around the lure on the, on that top and bottom, both sides, and then on either side of the lure, um, we're going to make another line that's going to encircle the entire lure, and then we're going to carve that out, and that's going to be our lines for our carving. So you'll see in the next, in the next, slide, or in the next slide where we'll be actually uh, carving the lure. So this is where you want to make sure you have a really nice sharp knife, whether you're using a carving knife or have some razor blades on hand if you're going to be using a box cutting knife to, to do your carving, which a lot of people do. Okay, so this is kind of where the fun starts, where the fun starts on making the lure. So I've basically got the center, or the slot for the um, through wire already cut out. And now I've got all the lines drawn for the chamfer lines are already drawn out. And now what I want to do is we're going to start carving um, within those lines all the way around the lure. On both sides, top and bottom. 
and you want to stay within those lines and that will give you the basic shape of the lure. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to thin out the top and keep the sides kind of wide and then it tapers back down to the bottom. On this one I chose to kind of leave the bottom a little bit thick because I wanted to um, leave enough room for the lead holes. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've got the lure in the vise. It's all done and carved, and now I'm just going to start sanding it down uh, using a very coarse grit sandpaper and working my way to finer and finer grits. Now you can use belt sander paper, which I'm using here, or you can take a really, or you can take sandpaper, regular sandpaper, put it over some uh, duct tape and cut it to length and use it like that, and then you've got um, some tape that's going to last or sandpaper. That's going to last you for a really long time and it's not going to break on you as you're sanding. So again take your time there's no hurry you're going to do the top back front and then you're going to do the bottom all the same and get it nice and rounded out and smooth. And here I'm using a 3 8 Forstner bit and I'm drilling out the eye sockets that my glass eyes will seat into. Okay well at this point, I've done quite a bit of work off camera on this lure. Um, I'm all done sanding it. I got the lead holes drilled out. I've got the hook hanger hole drilled out. And then I got the top slot because I'm taking the wire down through the uh, from the top. And that's all cut out already. And it's all ready for test fitting. So basically, what, what you, you'll also see on this lure is you'll see a line... Uh, drawn out on the side and you'll see probably another area where I drew where a possible hook hanger would be. So that is just giving me a reference of how I want the lure to bend and where I want all the wire uh, or the wire to bend and where I want all the wire placement to be. And it's a really good idea that you do this on the lure so that way you know exactly where to make your bends, especially when you're making your hook hangers. Um, don't forget this is a pretty long process. Take your time. Do not hurry. And just, you know, it's just a matter of, like I said, bending the wire and then fitting and test fitting and rebending and rebending and so on and so forth and just keep going. Okay, so all the sanding's done. I already sealed it, and now what you're now I, and I took some epoxy, and I drowned the lure in glitter, just like I did in the glitter bomb video, and then um, put another coat of epoxy on it. Let it sit for about 24 hours, gave it a good sanding, sealed it again with a polyurethane, and now it's going to be time for actually painting the lure. Uh, so what I started with was I started with a uh, metallic gold ink and then I lightly sprayed that over the over the entire lure uh, on the tops and the sides and then from there 
I took a, if I remember correct, I think it was a Wicked Detailed Yellow. So what I did was I'm using Wicked Detail Yellow uh, on the body of the lure. This is the second layer of paint that I put on. The second, the first layer was the metallic gold. It was an ink. Now this one's going to be, like I said, Wicked Detail Yellow. This is the second layer. And what I'm doing is I am spraying it down the top and then down and across the sides. And again, just doing it very lightly, just making a nice little spritz down the sides, just to give it a yellowish tint um, with that glitter and gold. I still want the glitter to show through. So still uh, spraying that wicked detail yellow, as you can see how the um, glitter still shows through all the gold and through the um, actual ye uh, yellow. I think it gives a pretty cool effect right now and here I'm just basically doing some uh, clear coating with a poly with a water-based polyurethane that I'm putting through the airbrush and this was something I just tried really quick I I didn't know how it would turn out but um, it flows through the airbrush without any problem without even thinning and then it cleans up nicely because it's water-based and I had no problems um, getting paint through the airbrush afterwards and I did each layer like that So this is the lure finished with the Wicked Detail Yellow over the metallic uh, light gold ink. And I really like the effect how you can see the glitter through it all. And this is the effect I was going to try to keep throughout the entire lure. Okay, so um, after, after uh, multiple coats, uh, so I've used um, gold and then I've used Wicked Detail Yellow lightly down lightly off the top and down the sides and um, with multiple coats of clear coat that I sprayed through the airbrush I am now going to get ready to use uh, wicked golden yellow which is another which is going to be the third layer of paint which is starting at the top and then again working my way down the sides and just maybe going to the lateral line and allowing that um, the um, the spray the overspray just to kind of hit just past the lateral line and that was the effect I was going for because I still wanted to have that glitter still showing all the way up the sides up to the lateral line. And um, so this is what this is what uh, we're going to have here. Wicked detail, wicked golden yellow down the top and the sides. Um, and we'll see what that's going to be followed by. So the wicked golden yellow was um, followed by this uh, ye yellow ochre. And I was... I didn't really know if I really wanted to use this, but I decided to. So this is the fourth layer of paint. And again, another very light coat holding the airbrush very far away from the uh, lure. Just allowing just the, just the spurt, the mist to get to it, just to show the yellow. Adding the fifth, I believe the fifth and final layer of paint on the body. This was a wicked uh, metallic bronze that I was painting over it and um, again just going over the top I went over the top a little bit heavy and then allowed it to kind of just mist down the sides and then painted around the front of the head a little bit heavier on it as well and then down the sides to the back but just kind of misting it here and there getting it on the sides still trying to allow that glitter to show through And then as you can see, based on how the lures turned, um, you can see that uh, bronze showing through. So I got a little carried away and decided to add one more color to it. I needed something dark to go down the, to go down the dorsal side of the lure. And I chose a uh, burnt umber. And this is another ink that you can buy at Hobby Lobby. And all I wanted to do with this was take it down the side of the lure, take it down straight down the top of the lure, and then just lightly, ever so lightly over the sides of the lure, hopefully just getting some mist down the sides. Still trying to get that glitter to show through. 
and then getting some of that uh, burnt umber at the front of the lure as well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to make the scales on the lure. I got it all wrapped up in some wire mesh and I also have it all clipped up. And then what I have, what you see in my hand is a bottle of pearl green and that is going to, I'm going to use the pearl green as um, just a, to kind of spritz it, spray it from a really far distance and give it that kind of scale like effect. Not Or like maybe there's like little splotches or something like that in there. And then using the burnt umber, I'm going to do the same thing, but spray it from the opposite way. The green I sprayed from the head to the tail, and now the burnt umber, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it at a, long, at a far distance, but going from the tail to the head, and that will put the paint more towards the front of the scales versus the back, like um, when we did it with the green, um, spraying it from the head to the tail, gave it more of a the, the green going toward at the back of the scales. So this has got to be one of my favorite types of paint to use, this uh, Space Dust. It's a color shifting paint. And as you can see, I'm pointing to what looks like bright gold brown. And this is the paint I'm going to use for the actual scales um, that you're going to see as you turn the blur one way or the other. It's going to color shift to, to a greenish brown for the scale versus just a pale um, pearl, pearl white that kind of drowns everything out. This is going to add some flash and some really, some really nice effects. Okay, so with this color shifting paint, it isn't a matter of do I spray it from head to tail or tail to head. This is just a matter of I'm going to spray it on the scale straight on and then um, make it nice. I, went, I think I went a little too heavy on it, but um, it looks awesome, I must say. I was really happy with how this paint came out. And then you'll see the unveiling shortly. All right, so this is the color shifting paint for the scales after it's done. You can kind of see the scales uh, moving backwards and forwards and how the color just shifts in the light. It's pretty cool. Anyways, um, at this point, I'm going to start painting the belly of the lure and using a pearl metallic white and just doing some really, really light uh, coats so that that way at least the uh, glitter can kind of show through the um, scale, show through on the belly. So finally, I think I'm actually done painting the body of the lure. Uh, this is where I, I'm actually used the last final touch is a transparent black. Then I'm just going to lightly spray down the back of the lure and then around the side, around the um, the front of the head, just to kind of give it some contrast. So for me, this is probably the most nerve-wracking part of doing the whole of doing the whole lure, painting it and everything. Uh, I'm getting to the, I'm at the gills now, and what I'm doing here, I made a template. Um, I just basically traced out an outline of the head of the lure on a piece of cardboard, cut it out, made the scale, made drew out the gills how I thought they should be, how I'd like them. And then cut those out and then put some tape on the back so that way I can bend the cardboard without it breaking. I probably should have used some like clear tape or something. But anyways, I'm using clear um, opaque white paint to just kind of paint the, um, the gills along just kind of making a white border that every other color will then build on that. And I did that for the front of the gill and then move them to the back, undoing the flap, painting it, and then... Um, and then going on and doing the other side of the lure as well. So after doing the other, so after doing the other side of the white, now I'm moving on to painting the black. And this black is just going to be like a fine border, just to differentiate the, um, just where the different parts of the gill are going to be when I start actually painting the head.
and here I am doing the other side as well. So you do one side, you got to do the other. So the other side is getting done. Transparent black is the paint. And then from there, we're going to move on to another color and build from there. So I think these are probably the best gills I've ever done on a lure. Um, did really well with the stencils. I'm really happy with them. Um, and the white gives me more freedom to kind of do the things I want to do if I want to do any kind of shading. So here um, I'm actually adding some color accents to the gills. Uh, I believe this is going to be a wicked red that I'm using. to. I wanted, wanted to give it the like the hint of blood coming from the gills, like the fish is injured when it's swimming through the water. And hopefully maybe that would attract some sort of predatory fish. So here this is, took a lot of time doing this. Luckily I didn't, uh, it only took one take to make these gills. So I'm really happy with that. And then as usual, you have to do the other side. So I just flipped it around, took the stencils, flipped the stencils around, uh, taped the stencils onto the body of the lure, and then just uh, painted and then just painted the red right across the stencil, trying to get that nice fine line uh, behind the gill to make it look like that gill's that fish is bleeding as it's swimming through the water. Like I said, hopefully to attract a predatory fish. Okay, so this was probably the longest part of making the lure. This is where, um, after the gills are all painted, um, I just kind of randomly took the colors that I put in the lure. So that would be the metallic gold, the um, wicked detail yellow, the wicked yellow gold, um, the yellow ochre, as well as um, the, bron the metallic bronze, and my burnt umbra, or burnt umber. Um, and just kind of turn the airbrush at its lowest setting and just randomly put the colors wherever I felt like I wanted to put them on the head of the lure. And kind of using the, the gill template as well to kind of, so the, the black um, didn't get obscured by the colors. And when all that was done, um, I took some of that um, color shifting paint and painted over the head and down the back with the color shifting paint to um, just kind of give it that a pearly type effect where the colors were kind of muted out a little bit, and not so strong. And they, it looks like they almost blend in with each other. And that's kind of the effect I was going for and I've, I've kind of done that on some of my other lures, and I kind of tried to add that onto this one as well. So, um, all right, so that's the lure. And um, we're going to be moving on to the fins next and the eyes, getting the eyes painted. So stay tuned.
So after I got the head completed, um, the colors on the gills all done, color shift paint over that, it was time to paint the it was time to paint the fence. Now I've only done this one other time with a stencil, and it came out okay. But um, this second time was going to come out much better, and um, I think it did. So as you can see, I've got the stencil taped. Uh, the color for the fin that I'm using is burnt umber, and I have a straight edge that I use, and I'm starting at the bottom of the fin and working my way up the up to the top of the fin and using that straight edge as a, makes a nice mark and then the overspray it kind of looks like the um like the webbing on the fin so it looks really cool and i would have to say probably for my second time i thought this was pretty darn good so enjoy the painting and um we'll see how this goes then afterwards, actually what I did afterwards was um, I painted some accent colors in some like oranges, reds at the base of the fin and then kind of shaded the fin another with uh, some orange just to make it stand out a little bit from the rest of the lure. Okay, and after the scales in the head, here I am uh, painting some accents on the fins using some... Uh, fluorescent orange and then doing that and then just kind of um, spritzing it over the fin just to give it some contrast and then going over underneath the lure with some uh, wicked red to make it look like there's a lot of blood coming from the fish or the lure. Okay so here we are making the eyes on this lure. Um, I got the metal foil that you can see over there, and I hit it with a punch, the 3 8 inch punch, punched a hole in it, and popped it out of the uh, hole, out of the punch, and then I take the tape off and I put it into the socket. And from there, I've already got the eyes painted, the eye, uh, the, the pupil painted, and then, um, you know, you paint the iris, I painted it yellow, and then I took some uh, epoxy and then some glitter, and mix it all together, put the glitter inside the epoxy, and then gently put the eye in and just let the epoxy set. And I did the same thing on the other side. And I think the it looked really cool. So um, it had a really nice effect, really nice shimmer when the light shines on it. So those were the eyes. Okay, so I got the lure finished. The eyes are in. They're epoxied. Um, I cut the diving lip out, got it all sanded smooth, um, and then polished it on the strop, and also got that epoxied in. So that's the lure, how it looks uh, prior to finishing. Now I'm mixing the epoxy. This is a one-to-one uh, -one mix. Like I said before, you could either do it by volume, or you could do it by weight, and in this particular case, I'm doing it by weight, using a scale measuring out the grams. So after the epoxy is thoroughly mixed, um, I then put in some. I then put in a bunch of glitter, uh, silver, and then I put in some gold, and then I take that and I paint that on the lure. And once the lure is completely covered in the epoxy, give it a quick heat, blow all the air bubbles out. And then let it sit for a few hours before I put the second coat on. So here's a shot of the lure on with on your on the rotisserie after its first coat of epoxy. Um, after it's good and dry, or somewhat dry, still a little tacky, I'm going to put the second coat of epoxy on, and then let it sit for another 24 to 48 hours before it's all set. So. After the painting and the finish, here's our action shot of the lure. Uh, some casting, reeling it in. Uh, I had to tune it a little bit, but overall, I am extremely happy with the action of the lure. I think it's I think it's going to catch something this spring, and I am just thrilled to try to. to I'm just excited to use this lure um, this spring. Hopefully, maybe it'll catch a muskie or 
maybe a huge bass, but something. I know it will. So thank you for so I just want to thank everybody for watching. And don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe, and then also don't forget to share this with your friends and your family and people who like fishing. So again, thank you for watching and I really appreciate all your support. And you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. There's a nice wiggle to it. Nice cast. I thought this was going to catch a muskie too. Nice cast, nice accurate cast. faster yeah I think it yep pull out Let's see yep darn it slow retriever works great has a nice action to it fast retrieve I'm not too sure about, but let's see. We're just going to do this. I mean, it does what I want it to do. It has a nice slow rise. It has a nice action to it. it. Has a beautiful action. I like the action. Love the flash.